We are back for part two of how to show groom your long hair dachshund. With her many years of experience, Jen Descharm combined techniques that she has learned from grooming golden retrievers, Irish setters, as well, of course, your long haired dachshund. So be sure to watch until the very end for all of her amazing tips. Oh my goodness, we are all going to learn so much. Now the house that I just cleaned is going to be covered in dog fur. <laughs> <laughs> I know you all know the drill. I'm on the road filming more and more grooming episodes, so you keep making those requests and I'll keep adding them to the list. The more merchandise you buy, the more I get to travel and add more episodes, so thank you in advance for your support. Comment below on what breed you'd like to see, like and share this video with your friends, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so so that you can ring that little bell, that way you won't miss one episode. Yep. We are totally picking up where we left off in episode one. That would be getting ready to bathe Mr. Whiskey with our diluted Clean Start shampoo mixture. I think the first thing we need to share is our mutual love of the booster bath. Love these these things. things are the best. Awesome. I love them. They save your back. Yep, I have that same size for yeah. the Whippet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I do all breeds and I've done everything in here from itty bitty to big uh, 115 pound great pyrenees oh wow okay yeah, so. nice good to know they are also what most dog clubs have available for public bathing stations at dog shows so having one on hand at home will definitely get your dogs accustomed to being bathed on the road at shows they are very easy to set up and are something that you can actually just store outside and use your outdoor hose for water supply and then you use the drain hose to control where the water goes i totally totally love mine and you know i linked how to get yourself one down below so check it out and now with that back to our regularly scheduled grooming of a long hair dachshund the main reason why she dilutes is not just to allow the bottle of shampoo to last longer it's because it takes just a very little amount to get a really good lather very big mitts <laughs> oh wow those are big feet big old foot <laughs> that is that's a huge foot yeah. The dachshunds. I mean, he weighs 32 pounds. Wow, does he really? Yes, My whippet weighs, weighs like 20. Right, he weighs 32 pounds. He just has short legs. He has short legs. Right. There's a lot he of a meat. Dog. Yeah. Yes. He just has stubby legs. <laughs> People forget that about dachshunds. <laughs> Get them wet, lather them up, and rinse them off. The next step is to condition. Okay, so this is the after bath. The after bath. It's a coat conditioner. Nice thing about this after bath too, this will do this entire dog. Oh wow, that's not that much. No. Mm -mm. That's why I really like these products. You don't need a ton of it to do. I use about that little bit more for the golden. And just massage that into the coat really well. Do you let it sit for a while? Um, it depends how much time I have. <laughs> <laughs> it says it should sit about five minutes. Okay. <laughs> of course, you're gonna do the same thing with the conditioner. After your five minute wait, rinse them off and let them do what just about any wet dog will do. You know, the whole I'm a wet dog, I'm gonna do my thing dance. Okay, let's go blow dry you. How's that sound? Ready? So what I usually do before I start blow drying is I will dry the short stuff with the force dryer and blast out some of the water and then I take the hot dryer and blow dry the long stuff to get it straight. So as Jen mentioned, she starts with the force dryer, getting the majority of the water off the coat. But watch how she works from the back and moves towards the front. Moving the nozzle in a back and forth direction, you can literally see the water flying off the dog's coat. So work from the top of the dog to underneath, blowing the water down onto the towel that's beneath it. Pretty cool, eh? From there, you move on to the heat. Just like on your own human hair, the heat is going to help you not only straighten, but direct the hair to help it lay in the direction you want it to go. Um, what I tend to do with the longer coat is use the pin brush. Okay. Kind of pull it out, blow dry it, and get it laying the way I want. Let's do with the force dryer, kind of blowing it all the direction I would like it to go, and then you tweak it by with your grooming whether it's stripping coat out, taking coat, scissoring, whatever you need to do. But if you get it all going in the direction you want it to lay to start with, um, it makes life a lot easier, a lot less grooming. I was always taught to start at one place and kind of work in a circle around your dog. 
on the table. That way you don't miss anything. If you bounce from here to there, come back here, over here, do this, do that ear, do the tail, do that butt cheek, do this butt cheek, you miss things. I start show side front and work my way around the dog. Okay. So you get back to non-show side non front. Non-show side front, okay, yep. all right, good. And just do it methodically and you won't miss anything. Okay. Yep. Good, awesome tip, awesome. Yep. So when I use a hot dryer, I tend to go underneath the coat and pull it out from the body and blow dry it down the way I want it to go. It helps to get the coat away from the body and makes it dry faster. And your best tool to help you get the most out of your heated dryer is most definitely your pin brush. So we're going yep. out and down. down. Yep. You're pulling it out away from the body, but what you're doing with the dryer is blowing it in the direction you want it to lie. Once okay. He, he's completely grown. And then, you know, of course, brush, right. brush, brush, find when I'm like, okay, we need to scissor this and see if this is where I start kind of plotting what I'm going to do, do grooming-wise, too. And then what I always do is sink my fingers down to the skin in the coat and make sure it is 100% dry. Because if it is not 100% dry, everything you've done is useless. Because you'll get them to the ring and it starts to dry and it just flips every this way. 100% dry. You're going to use these techniques on all of that long coat. Up, then out, then feel away. Oh my word, that sounds kind of sexy, doesn't it? <laughs> Once that body coat is done, now we move on to the ears. I'm going to change brushes to the brass bristled brush. Um, this is where you get that shine and stuff. You so use with this. the heat, with the heated dryer, we're going to uh -huh. use the brass brush. Okay, yes. nice. Hold your dryer either here or here, whatever's comfortable for you. Okay. I like here. I start at the top of the ear and kind of back brush. Okay. To get most of the wetness out. And you can kind of see as it starts to dry, it's not going to look as crinkly. Yep. In the ear. So when it's almost dry, and this applies to a lot of breeds, you can back brush to get them dry quicker. And when they are almost completely dry, then you brush it the way you want it to lay. Go down, okay. And this goes for goldens, setters, dachshunds, and lots and lots of bread. See? Difference? Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. And it's so silky and soft. Very and cool. don't forget to do the underside of the ear. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's, That's still so wet, yep. Now, this doesn't matter so much unless you've got a ton of coat on the ears. He does not have a ton of coat on his ears, so it doesn't matter which way we blow right. it. It's going to lay the way I want it to, because I already did the top of the ear. Also, be careful with your heat, too. You don't want to burn the ears. Burn the ears. You can also do this with the top of the head. You get it. It's pretty dry. I took care of that myself. <laughs> yeah, rolling around on his beach towel. Very nice and pretty dry ear. Yeah. Yes. All right. You ready? Should we finish the rest of you? He's like, okay. Yeah, okay. So, with grooming a long-haired dachshund, they're a breed that concentrates on the front. They are definitely a breed that they are concerned with this whole front assembly here. Okay because of uh, what they were bred to do, go to ground, dig holes, go after badgers. They have to have a very strong, powerful front. Okay. So with the long hair, because you've got all the hair, you want to groom it to show that off. Okay. And show the points you're looking for, the judges are looking for. Same thing as the blow drying. I start at the front show side and work my way around. Okay. To make sure I don't miss anything. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know like many of us, she starts on the feet. Cleaning off those pads with the trimmer is the very first step. So where I usually start, I kind of start from the bottom and work my way up. You okay. You can do it either way, whatever works for you. Um, I tend to start with my mini clippers and do the bottom of the feet. Yep. And he has deceptively big feet. <laughs> he has huge feet. I mean, holy crap, those are huge. Yes, the better for digging into badger holes with. Well, there you go, yeah. yeah. So what I do is I just trim along the edges, and he loves his feet done, by the way. I see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't we all? Yes. 
I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna completely cut them off. Right. And the more you can do with the clippers, the less you have to do with scissors. scissors yeah. Now, what I was taught from his breeder was to do this like a golden foot. Okay. So, what I do is I clipper and make sure I've got everything I can with the clipper. Then I take my straight shear and then I clean up any lines. Give it that real nice clean look. And do, of course, be careful that you don't scissor their pads because right. they bleed like crazy. And then that's an unexpected trip to the veterinary. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have it sutured. <laughs> Whoops! That's not fun. No. The way I was taught to do golden feet was take the foot and back brush mm -hmm. the fur on top with your slicker brush and follow the contour of the foot. So start this way and go like this. Okay, go around the top. Yes of the foot and you want to kind of take that stuff you pulled up down and you'll start seeing the foot looking more defined mm -hmm. and I tend to see people do this a lot with thinning shears they jab and cut don't do that don't do it that. leaves scissor marks and it actually pulls the hair Okay. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> it okay. Doesn't feel right. Good. Right. So if just, you move just... in a smooth fashion across the foot. Just across. Okay. And if you look when I scissor, I'm not getting a ton of hair. I mean, you get more when you first start. But then stop and re brush up. And then see the long stuff that's sticking off the ends of the toes. And then you're going to go this way. And you want to be careful not to get what you already did on the top of the foot. Right. You're going to go more, towards that. To that. Right. Okay. And you're going to get along the edges to even that all out. And you can kind of go back and forth between the two. So vertically and then horizontally. Yes. And you just want to shape that foot. Oh, I mean, look at the difference between yes. these two feet. Yes. <laughs> Big difference. I mean, huge <laughs> difference. Right. Look at that. And then the last thing I do is around the toes is go and clean up any stray. Any rogues. Yep. With your straight shear. Remember I told you about dachshunds are notorious for walking on their pasterns and hawks? Yes. So it's not something you want in this breed. It is a problem. I would say I see more do it than not. <laughs> I clean up the pastern and you start here. Now this is the way I do my golden feet too. Okay. You clean up this pad. Same thing. You're going to back brush it with your um, okay. slicker. Now, if your dog walks on his pasterns, I probably wouldn't do you that. You wouldn't do that, right? Make it way more noticeable. But look at the difference yeah. when he's stacked. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yes, he definitely does not walk on his pasterns. No. Mm -mm. Next thing I do is, and this I learned from setter people. So this is where the mush of golden grooming and setter grooming come start to kind of come together. So we're basically going with golden feet. <laughs> golden nice, feet. But golden feet. So this long stuff on the back of his leg, mm -hmm. his is long and he will walk on it if it's left too long. So what I usually do, mm -hmm. pull it down and then just trim. One, it cleans it up so it doesn't look so ragged. You just want to clean it up with your thinning shear. And then again, when you put that foot down. Then it won't be. It that. doesn't look so shaggy. Yep. And he so, won't walk on it. Right. Doesn't step on it. Look at the difference. Yeah, that's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like it. Yeah. And then these guys are funny because you set their feet way under their chest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, now definitely. Yes. Yep. So this is all part of showing off this shoulder piece. Mm -hmm. oh, you're over this. Um, once you get this all groomed out. Okay. So when you set this leg back here, it makes this front and this chest really right. pop out. Now the head and the neck. This is more where the setter grooming comes in. And what I usually do is I pull the ears out of the way. One, so I don't take any unnecessary coat off. If they're not staying up in the grooming noose, you can't always do the, pull it over their head and just hold it with your fingers. Now this, this is kind of houndy. I do my whippets this way too. And cleaning this up, mm -hmm. cleaning up this V. And what you're looking for here is one, they should have a wedge head. So when you pull the ears back, their head should look like a wedge. Okay. Yep. Which he yep. definitely has. He has they it. should have a Roman nose, which means they have a slight rise in their nose. Here. Okay. 
his is a little hard to see. He's got, got a scar. <laughs> got <little> wounds. <laughs> but then this wedge head feeds down into a V here okay. down to the uh, fore chest. Okay. Which this, it's hard to see on the video. You'll see it better when he's groomed. If you feel here, he's got a chest. Oh, here. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, he does. So once we get this all groomed down, you'll be able to see it better. But this is what you want to show off. Okay. So we need to get rid of a lot oh, of this. A lot of that. Okay. <laughs> so I always start, like I said, with brushing everything down the way you want it to go. And then what I usually do is I cut my outside lines from my V so I know where I'm cutting within. Okay. So you're gonna trim this stuff with your thinning shears. And again, don't jab at it. It's smooth, yeah. Right? And you're gonna make a couple snips. This is general rule with any thinning shear. Make a couple cuts and comb. Cut and comb, cut and comb, until you're used to doing it. So see, this is the start of your V, and mm -hmm. you can see where that line yep. is coming in for you to follow, to work within. That's yep. what you wanna work within. I can see the difference between that and yes. that. Yes, yeah. yeah, big difference. And it kind of gives you guidelines mm -hmm. so you don't go all wonky and start stripping out all the stuff all on the your stuff shoulder. Right. <laughs> right. And you don't have to be worry about being too aggressive. This is just kind of your basic line. You don't want to take it all the way down to the skin because you're going to need to sculpt it a little bit later once you have everything kind of cut where you want it. Mm -hmm. Stop, honey. Oh, boy. But like I said, it just gives you those basic right. lines. And this applies to setters too. Okay. You do setter necks like this. A lot of people clipper them. I used to. I like this better. It's a more natural, natural look. Natural look. Yeah. Once you've got your lines here and you can see this V, you want to pull it down about here. Now it depends whether your dog has a long neck, shorter neck, if you want it to look like it's got more neck. That depends how far yeah. you pull that V down. Right. So I like his neck once I get all this other stuff trimmed off of it, um, his neck will be the right length. So the way I do this is you take your comb with those thinner bristles or teeth, tines, whatever they're called, sorry. Back brush this all up. Take your thinning shears and you're gonna start at the bottom. And horizontally go up. Yep. Okay. You're going to follow the way the coat goes. And the same thing. You're going to kind of start and then comb it down. See a big difference already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you want to get this pretty tight. I mean, you can look at setters to kind of get an idea how close you want it. But again, don't do that jabbing motion. Yeah. You're going to get a more even cut. And this is how you don't have scissor marks. Keep going over. Mm-hmm the same spot until you get it all the length you want. And once you start to get closer to the skin, you can go up and down to kind of blend it more. And it this is not a quick process. This doesn't this is, happen overnight. Right. <laughs> but I can see the difference already. I mean, yes. it's... So uncut and cut. Yeah. You can see the difference. See the huge difference. But see, difference. it looks more natural. It doesn't right. look scissored. You don't see scissor. Right. You do see scissor marks because I'm not done yet. Right, right, right. But no, there's there's definitely quite the Stop. difference. Yeah. So that's how you, you're you going to do the neck. And you want to blend into the face here. And you want to take it up to about his cheekbone here. Okay. Because you want to blend this. You don't want it in the... This. So there's the thing with the clippers too. Yes, it's much faster. You can do the clippers. I recommend a 10 or a 12 blade. Thicker in coat, use a 12 blade. Thinner in coat, use a 10 blade. Okay. Okay. But you're going to have a definite line where that clipper, you started and clippered oh. down. But with the scissors, you can blend it more. And yes, we know it's scissored and it's trimmed and blah, 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 but it looks a little more natural. Now mm -hmm. see the coat direct changes direction here. Right. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come from this angle. Yep. That's about done. Yeah. I would tweak it a little bit before he shows, but that's about where you want to start. Okay. So with the ear, again, I pull the grooming noose ahead of it. Uh-huh. And then what you want to do, and this is a little bit golden, a little bit setter, because usually the setters, you take clippers and clipper their ears down. It's usually three fingers lengths. We don't do that with Dachshund. Okay. <laughs> so this is more how I clean up a golden ear, but it's a little bit longer. So you want to take all of this in here down 
and thin some of this out in here because you're looking for that wedge head and if you've got all this stuff sticking out here it right. detracts from that wedge, wedge head. head so you want to take this down and define the neck and the face a little bit more you can see the difference yeah oh def definitely yeah. see the difference it yep. makes his face yep. seem wider here yep. whereas here you've got it's a clean very clean line. yeah oh yeah definitely yeah definitely yep do you clean up around the edge at all or just leave it natural no. mm -mm. i leave it I, well he doesn't have a lot of coat to work with so i try not to take much plus he shows as a veteran now right so no we don't mess too much with that now we're gonna work on the shoulder on the here shoulder this he's got quite a bit of coat here you can do this multiple ways and it kind of depends it's up to you you can strip it you can use a stripping knife and mm -hmm. strip some of this out. Uh -huh. Be careful not to put holes in right, the coat with right. a stripping knife. Use a coat king. Again, be careful not to put a hole in the coat. So with the coat king, and it's kind of hard here because you're going over that shoulder and it's a little slower going, but you can get some of the coat out like that. It's just gonna take a little more time. Um, if you use the Coat King, what you can do once you've stripped out some of it, you can take your thinning shears and kind of cut along this line to define that shoulder. We're looking for this line of the shoulder here. Okay. And, you know, you can take it up or leave it a little longer depending on what your dog's shoulder is like. You have to do it carefully and not go bonkers with it. I like to go up underneath and make, it's usually with this, with him, it's like three snips. Yeah, just to pull that book. I do the same thing with yeah, my chihuahuas. I know. Like, some people flip out, though, when you do that, and I don't know why. But look at the difference. Yeah, no, it's a heat, yeah. And then, again, then what you can do is take your thinning shears. And then shape it. From, and yeah. clean that up. Now, too, with these guys, you want to take some of this stuff down here. Just to see that chest, yeah. Right. I mean, I'm already starting to see it, but... Mm -hmm. And like this stuff can get really long. Yeah. But look at the difference That's when you go. That's a huge difference. Yes. Look at the difference from the front. Oh yeah. I mean, that's huge a difference. Huge look at difference. how different his shoulders look. You can actually see that he has shoulders. Right. Like there is the shoulder. Right. And you can't here, miss it. there is no, there is, yeah. It's there, there somewhere. It's there somewhere, <laughs> but yeah, this definitely defines the shoulder yes. really, really nice. Yep. And again, this is something else you can do with setters too, because they're kind of the same thing. The same, you want to yeah. see that front, you know, you do have to really evaluate your dog and know what's good and not good. What you want to hide and what, what you want to come. Yeah, right. Yeah, what you want to hide and what you want to show off. Both of my, I'm really lucky, both of my dachshunds have really nice fronts. Well, what I think is a nice front. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. That's all a matter of opinion right. too. But this makes a huge difference and you have to kind of watch too, uh, coat color. Yeah. And you can carve a hole in yeah. the color. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. And then you get, yeah, and, and then, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> a whole other right, right, right. So that's why like with him, I like to go underneath because that doesn't create the holes in the coat. Right. Oh, okay. That may, yeah, because see, I have a black and tan yeah. that at the root, the black is actually tan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will, yeah, people have, yep. yeah, it's not yeah. pretty. No, it's not. And it takes a long time for it to grow. Grow out, yeah. So, yeah, so going underneath, so, yes, yeah. Be careful when grooming your dog, especially if it's one you're showing. Don't yeah. go hog wild. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time, plan an afternoon, and go slow. Go that slow. is one of the best things yeah. I can recommend yeah. until you are 100% certain how you want that dog groomed. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're no. gonna, Unfortunately, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, well, practice. And it's all a learning experience. Yeah, it, definitely. So, huh, I know, you're about over it. After all of that work, it's quite the difference, right? It's all about the front on this breed, and thanks to her amazing techniques, you too can spotlight the front on your dog. And holy crap, I still can't get over how big their feet are. Seriously. Wow. Wow. I would put product in, okay. loose and hairspray, and get this to lie a little more flat. Okay. Now, this is not a breed that is supposed to have a stick straight coat. 
you want some curl and wave to it. Okay. Because it's supposed to protect them out in the field. And it should not be a soft coat. It's a hard coat. Okay. Yeah. yeah I was going to say it's not soft. I mean, it's shiny because of the product that you put on it. Right. But it's but not a soft. Yeah, there's there's definite texture to this right. coat. Wherein that's what a golden coat should be also. Okay. It's, you put them out in the field and you should be able to bring them back, brush them. Brush them and, and go. Go on your way. Not shave your dog from nose to tail. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so... And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Your dachshund is ready to either go in the ring or, of course, live on the couch, which Mr. Hamilton does quite well at both, I might add. The official show dog of the house was a tad bit jelly over all of the attention given to our favorite veteran and model, Whiskey. You look so proud. Let me show off my ear. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so over this. <laughs> Hamilton needs to learn to share the love a little bit, just like Jen did. So I cannot wait to hear all about your grooming adventures with long-haired dachshunds or even golden retrievers and Irish setters. Be sure to let me know below what you learned and what your favorite part was. Until next time. I don't know if you could, if you can hear them. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to see. Those if we, are my dark frogs. Oh my. Are they darting? Oh, they're just singing. I, I don't know what they're doing. I can't figure out who's doing it. Oh. <laughs> so.